Hello, all of you. Greetings from St. John's Medical College, Bangalore, India. I am Dr. Vijay Aithal. I am Professor and Head of Dermatology Department at St. John's Medical College. Uh, these are the disclaimers. I would request uh, you please refrain from screen capturing, video or photographing either part or whole of this presentation. These are my conflicts of interest, but none of this pertain to the present uh, case study presentation. I would like to acknowledge uh, and thank uh, Dr. Delvin, who was a senior resident in dermatology, and now he is in Kerala. Dr. Renuka Mali Patil, who is from the pathology, who helped us out with the slides. Dr. Hari Menon and team from the Department of Medical Oncology and the department and team members of radio diagnosis at St. John's Medical College Hospital. All right, so <clears throat> to start with, uh, this was a male patient, uh, IJ, who was a 32 years old, self employed carpenter from Andhra Pradesh, who presented to us with loosening of teeth since three years, growth in the heart pellet since three years, multiple papillopustular lesions over the body on and off since two years, and non-healing ulcer or right big toe since the past two years. So as you can see here, he had multiple papillopustular P-sized lesions for both the legs to begin with which then gradually progressed to involve the entire body for the, over a course of two months. Uh, these lesions were predominantly over the seboric areas and uh, these lesions enlarged in size, they ulcerated and they formed hemorrhagic crusted plaques. Uh, he had taken treatment on and off for the past two years with antibiotics and topical medication with very minimal improvement and hence he discontinued treatment following which the lesions have worsened. So the, these are the lesions on the seboric areas. You can see these multiple small papillopustular lesions on the back which have also scarred and few of them have actually uh, crusted and formed uh, ulcers. Uh, Patient also noticed loosening of his upper left quadrant teeth, that is the molars, and there was associated pain which was radiating to the left mandibular region. He had undergone tooth extraction and got a fixed partial denture fix fixation. Uh, there was a single sized asymptomatic growth, P sized growth, uh, over the anterior part of the heart pellet and uh, simultaneously he developed papillar lesions on both the cheek. He also had undergone partial nail avulsion of the right big toe nail following which he developed a non-healing ulcer. So these are the ulcerative uh, growth that he had on his uh, heart pellet and similar papillar lesions were seen on the floor of the mouth. You can also observe and see that he's uh, lost his molars here. And uh, all right, so I'll, I'll pause here. Uh, you could uh, think about your likely diagnosis. I'll give you about uh, 15 to 20 seconds and then we will move on to the discussion. Welcome back. Uh, we had the following differentials in mind when he first presented to us. Uh, pemphigus erythematosus or 
vulgaris overlap, lupus erythematosus, cutaneous leishmaniasis, cutaneous B cell lymphoma, rhinosporiodiosis, rheumatis syphilis, and pyostomatitis vegetans. So, amongst these, the last four was uh, not very uh, forthcoming, but Leishmaniasis, since he was from Andhra Pradesh, we did give a thought to it. Investigations, blood profile was essentially normal with the lymphocytopenia and granulocytosis. Peripheral smear was normocytic normochromic with neutrophilia. Blood sugar, the biochemistry was normal. HIV, hepatitis, and anti HCV uh, antibodies were negative. VDRL was reactive in zero dilution, and TPHA was non reactive. RA factor was normal. There was a low CD4, uh, CD4 uh, T lymphocyte and a normal CD8 lymphocyte, which is the suppressor lymphocyte. Pathogy was negative. ANA and ANCA were negative. Swab from the right toe grew Klebsiella, which was sensitive to amikacin and ciprofloxacin, and Staphylococcus, which was sensitive to amikacin but resistant to ciprofloxacin. Cyst X ray was normal, ultrasound abdomen was normal, ECG and 2D4 were normal, smears for LD bodies was negative, AB smear from the lesions was negative for mycobacterium leprae. KOH from the nose lesions and oral cavity was negative for fungal filaments. Zank smear from the ulcer on the right toe was negative for multinucleate giant cells. Urine routine and microscopy was normal, including specific gravity and osmolality. Uh, we will come back to the relevance of this a little later once we have a diagnosis at hand. The X-ray of the mandible showed ill-defined lytic lesions with loose floating teeth. The CCT of the oral cavity and oropharynx showed mildly enhancing soft tissue, lytic lesions in the heart pellet and mandible with lymphadenopathy. And the impression uh, given by the radiology team was probably malignancy, which was extending from the adjacent upper gingival mucosa or uh, a metastatic lesion and hence a biopsy was suggested. So this is the x-ray of the mandible lesion. So you can see these lytic lesions over here and this is the CCT of the oral cavity and the oropharynx. You can clearly see the cyst lytic lesion in the mandibular bone. So, we did a biopsy. Histopathology from the ulcerated plaque on the nose showed compact orthokeratosis, parakeratosis, crusting with mild spongiosis and focal reduction in the granular layer. The dermis showed dense lichenoid inflammatory infiltrate composed chiefly of neutrophils, lymphocytes and plenty of eosinophils. So, this, this actually is very important to make a diagnosis. The deep dermis and subcutis were unremarkable and there was no evidence of acantholysis or interface dermatitis in the specimen. The ABA pass stain also was non-contributory. So finally the pathology said uh, we could go ahead with the immunofluorescence and it was negative for all the antibodies. So then we went ahead and did a biopsy from the ulcerated plaque or the heart pellet. So the sub-epithelial soft tissue showed dense infiltrate and aggregates of histiocytes having grooved nuclei and pale cytoplasm which was admixed with lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate and plenty of eosophils. There was also lymphocytic aggregates noted at POSE. So you can see this aggregates with histiocytic infiltrate 
and few of them actually show uh, you know, on a high power it showed a group nuclear with the pale cytoplasm so considering all these points coming back to the diagnosis what probably is your likely diagnosis i think uh, most of us would have already guessed by now so to add on this is the immunohistochemistry report which showed uh, 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 ihc was done with uh, cd1a s100 and cd68 and the report was that they expressed s100 and cd1a uh, almost 100 percent with a three plus staining and uh, a few of the cells also expressed cd68 yeah so uh, this was a langerhans cell histiocytosis which was a single system involvement with skin and soft tissue and multifocal bone disease so what did we do we started the patient on 20 milligrams methotrexate weekly with folic acid prednisolone we started with almost 80 milligrams over a month and then gradually tapered and stopped the medical oncology team uh, suggested we start vinblastin 12 milligrams uh, we gave them for gave him for four doses and then switched back to methotrexate however after six months we had to restart vinblastin for another six doses he was given uh, uh, pneumococcus jirovaki prophylaxis with cotrimoxazole and herpes prophylaxis with acyclovir 400 mg twice daily for six weeks uh, adjuvants like bisphosphonates calciums ppis and folic acid were also given and to control the infection amikacin and ciprofloxacin systemically were given for 14 days the plastic surgeon suggested we disarticulate the right great toe and uh, since the toe was completely damaged and secondarily infected so that was completed and the ulcer healed uh, without any secondary infection so this is the follow-up you see the ulcerated plaque on the nose almost coming to um, the normalcy with uh, even the papules responding very well uh, the the growth over his heart pellet almost seems to have completely gone only a scar is seen there so langeran cell histiocytosis which was earlier called histiocytosis x is an abnormal proliferation of langeran cells which is a dendritic cell in the skin and circulating histiocytes which results in abnormal reactive lesions in the skin and other organs with light dis destruction of bones uh, it was Paul Langerhans in 1868 who discovered the epidermal dendritic cells and the ultrastructural hallmark of Langerhans cell is the Birbeck granules which was described a century later. So the other cells of origin would include dermal and lymphoid tissues which are the resident Langerhans positive dendritic cells and monocytes and both the resist resting epidermal uh, dendritic cells which show birbeck granules and activated uh, langerhans cells which show cd5458 positivity are involved and uh, langerhans cell now is thought to represent a mononuclear phagocyte dysregulation syndrome and hence not limited to epidermal dendritic cells alone so there is a lot of controversy if uh, this is a reactive process or if it is a neoplastic process and it is still debatable uh, of uh, note and uh, uh, something new that has come in is a BRAF V600E mutation and MAPK mutation uh, and these two mutations have uh, generated interest towards a neoplastic predisposition and uh, the those with these mutations have a poorer prognosis 
semi mature langerhans cells stimulate the expansion of a polyclonal population of t reg cells this is the regulatory cells which is always involved in autoimmune processes and this inhibit the immune system and prevent it from effectively resolving langerhans cell histiocytosis histiocytosis there's a lot of studies uh, done on the role of human herpes virus 6 infection uh, as a trigger for immune dysregulation which will lead to lch uh, early onset with multifocal multi organ dysfunction has a poorer prognosis clinical presentation as far as the uh, dermatologist is concerned would vary from papules nodules and ulcerative lesions most commonly in the oral perineal perivalval and retroauricular regions and then slowly can spread on to become a generalized skin eruption systemic involvement could be either unifocal or multifocal and could involve any reticular endothelial system including lungs liver spleen or lymph nodes now the older classification uh, as eosinophilic granuloma hanshuler christian disease and letterocyte is not followed anymore but just for knowledge sake uh, eosinophilic granuloma was a chronic unifocal type of histiocytosis langerhans cell histiocytosis the hands color christian was a chronic multifocal type of lch and uh, letterocyte is the most severe form uh, of uh, langerhans cell histiocytosis then there is a congenital cell filling histiocytosis which presents with firm red brown painless papular nodules gingival enlargement oral ulcers and uh, floating teeth can resemble any other granulomatous condition acute disseminated lch with multi organ involvement would present with systemic features like fever anemia thrombocytopenia pulmonary infiltrates skin lesions and enlargement of lymph nodes spleen and liver the eruptions can be extensive to involve the scalp face trunk buttocks and intertrigenous areas maceration and secondary infections are very common which resembles seborrheic dermatitis petechiae and yellow brown papules which are topped with scale crusts are also seen bony involvement uh, they are mainly the most uh, commonly seen uh, lesions in a multifocal lch so we get a lot of these uh, lytic lesions which can cause otitis media there is also proptosis uh, which could uh, be secondary to an orbital mass loose teeth from infiltration of the mandibles pituitary dysfunction due to involvement of the cella turcica is also known and this is the one which could lead to diabetes insipidus and hence urine specific gravity and osmolality would uh, play an important role the classical multifocal type of lch which was earlier called the hans kuller christian disease would include diabetes insipidus exophthalmos and bony defects so the investigation should include complete blood profile biochemistry urine specific gravity and osmolality chest x ray and a high resolution ct x ray of the long bones and the flat bones mri of the head especially if the pituitary involvement is suspected and also of the spine pet scanning is able to identify lch in bones lymph nodes spleen and lung this has been a a, a good uh, uh, pickup investigation which will identify uh, multifocal lesions pulmonary function test biopsy from the bubble and hormonal assays audiological and ophthalmic evaluation may also be required biopsy is the key to diagnosis to identify the pathological langerhans cells and these consist of large ovoid mononuclear cells with a folded nucleus a discrete nucleolus and a slightly eosinophilic homogeneous cytoplasm uh, the classical birbeck granules which we see on electron microscopy 
uh, unfortunately not many centers have uh, electron microscopy hence we cannot rely on this particular uh, investigation uh, however immunohistochemistry uh, would show positivity to cd1a which is the most specific and major histocompatibility class 2 antigens expression of langerin which is the cd207 s100 and peanut agglutinin is also noted early treatment with chemotherapy uh, would include vinblastin and prednisolone and this has been suggested for bony lesions at vital anatomical structures bisphosphonates can also be used to reverse the bone destruction localized skin disease is usually treated with topical steroids including mometasone or clobetasol or uh, flucinolone alternatively Puva can also be quite useful. Acetatin and topical nitrogen mustard are also effective in the more aggressive form of the cutaneous lesions. Systemic chemotherapy is indicated for multi-system disease and that would include methotrexate, prednisolone and vinblastin. Etoposide, mercaptopurine, cyclosporin, cyclophosphamide and thalidomide are also added for resistant cases. Combination therapy with 2-chlorodeoxyadenosine and cytosine arabinoside are also useful in resistant cases. We also have a cocktail chemotherapy with the MACOP B that is methotrexate, doxorubicin, cyclophosphamide, vincristin, prednisolone and bleomycin which is given weekly for 12 weeks. Bone marrow stem cell transplantation have also been used as a salvage therapy. BRAF inhibitors like Vemurafenib can also be used in patients who show mutation in BRAF V600E gene. And uh, Covimatinib is also found useful in uh, certain uh, cases. Cytokine inhibitors like Alemtuzumab and uh, Epidermal Growth Factor in inhibitor like Imatinib are other potential drugs which can be used. So, to conclude, any granulomatous ulcerative lesion not responding to conventional treatment should raise suspicion. Langerhans cell histiocytosis is an extremely rare presentation which is easily confused with endemic infections like leishmaniasis. Biopsy with immunohistochemistry and imaging studies are very helpful. CD1A positivity and presence of Birbeck granules are highly specific. Early treatment for aggressive LCH with chemotherapy or biologicals can control disease, giving long term remission. Venblastin, methotrexate, and prednisolone are first line drugs in treating multifocal, multi organ Langerhans cell histiocytosis. So, these are the few of my references that you can go and check. Thank you for your patient listening. We hope to bring you many more interesting cases in near future. Thank you.